Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. To be a good comic book artist, you've got to know how to draw the figure. And a lot of people want to just jump in and start drawing these over-muscled, big, super-heroic figures. But a lot of drawing comics is drawing regular people. This book, The Famous Artist School Step-by-Step -Step Method, How to Draw the Human Figure, is a book that I got, I believe, when I was at the Kubert School. And it really focuses on uh, the basic shape, uh, mannequin, building of the figure. And then from there, you build up with anatomy and so forth. So I, I thought we should go through it. I love on this cover, you can see, this is just basic shape stuff right here on this figure. Uh, cylinders for legs, modified cubes for the torso and the waist. Here, a little more detail is added. And then, you know you get to this. Of course, there's more steps involved, but you know, you kind of get the idea. So let's go through this book. Let's see, let's get it framed up as best I can. How to Draw the Human Figure, Famous Artist School. How to Draw the Human Figure. Here we go. Uh, this book, I believe, has uh, tracing paper in it as well, so you can practice over it. Uh, the book came out in 1983. Of course, it has an introduction on drawing the human form, and it shows classical examples and art through history. Working tools, the pencil, uh, different ways of using the pencil, side strokes, things like that. God, even just these drawings of these hands are just so cool to me. They're so like... Uh, uh, 1950s because a lot of this stuff was done like the original art in this book is probably from let me see if it even shows I was gonna say it's probably from uh, the 50s or 60s uh, learn figure drawing with easy to follow method methods of these famous artists Albert Dorn he's a fantastic artist Robert Fawcett Austin Briggs Ben Stahl, Arnold Blanche. This says 1983 is when this book was published, but I was just curious. Mm, it doesn't really say when it originally was. All right. And then it goes into other supplies. All this stuff still holds true for today. Papers and drawing boards. Uh, we get into some photo reference here. Models and where to find them. Of course, a figure drawing class is great, but you can have a life class in your home. And it's a lot of doing with the TV. And especially nowadays, you can freeze frame a TV. Hell, on your phone, you can go to YouTube, find cool videos of figures in motion, pause it, and then just take a snapshot uh, still of your phone screen, if you'd like. Gesture drawing. Of course, all good uh, figure drawing. When you take life drawing classes and stuff, they start with gesture drawing, and the gesture is the overall movement of the figure before you get into the things of, like, the basic shapes. So even starting a drawing off, I'll get real loose, Sometimes use the side of the pencil and get the gesture down. And once the gesture is down, I'll start building on top of that. Goes into the importance of gesture. And kind of like I said, you can see it here. So even though I don't usually work with a model, this is Austin Briggs uh, talking here or writing here. Uh, and Austin Briggs, one of the founders of the famous artist school. So that's pretty cool. So, you know, you got the picture of the model, and he starts off loosey-goosey, side of the pencil, quick gesture. And then you can see he's blocking in more of the shapes, and then, of course, he refines it more. Now, you know, when you're first learning to draw and you see this, you know, don't let it get you down that this guy makes it look so easy. He's had years of practice and experience, but you'll get there. He's talking about the rhythm of the figure. Figures don't just stand up, 
uh, perfectly straight. There's movement to the figure with the flow, the way the hips and the shoulders will juxtapose themselves. And then, of course, there's the practice project, you know, and these are good. You could you could get this book. I'm pretty sure it's still available. The cover might look a little different. And you could practice and just do it on your own sketchbook paper instead of inside the book. This I love. Now we're talking about the basic forms. Basic forms, you've got to know the basics. If all you know are the basic forms, you can draw a figure. Uh, if you look at Steve Rude's work, for example, Steve, Steve's work is built a lot on basic forms. And yes, he does know anatomy, but like I said, just knowing the basic forms will help you immensely in your figure drawing. I love how they took a photograph here and put the basic forms over it. And that's what I say is the practice is take tracing paper over top of photographs and just practice putting the basic forms over top of uh, the photographs. Because once you can see this in your mind's eye and start drawing basic forms without photos, you'll be surprised how much easier it is to put on anatomy and stuff like that as well. Here's the basic uh, mannequin that was sold back in the day. Uh, now you can get ones that are, of course, more intricate. But these are good as well, just to see the basic lighting on a figure without all the details of anatomy and stuff. You know, right here, he took this photograph, broke it down into the basic forms. You can see where the lighting is. And then once you get the basic forms like that, you refine them to these shapes here, underlying shapes. You know, this is super basic. And then you refine it with the wedge shape for the legs and arms and such. Mm, look at her. She's crawling towards you. Meow. Uh, practical use of the basic form and figure. You know, once you get this down, basically you take these forms and you just exaggerate the size of these forms for larger characters like the Hulk, the Thing, uh, you know, heroes like that. Arnold Blanche taking a, a piece and showing how it works into the basic shapes. And then practice, of course. Contour drawing is good. It's, uh, it's something you do from life. And the more you do with contour drawing, the more when you start drawing out of your head, you'll remember how the contours, and the contour is the outline of the body. The more contour drawing you do from life, you add that to what you've learned with basic shapes, and then you apply them both, and you start getting your drawings to have more of that uh, realistic f feel from doing contour drawings. I always found it funny back then uh, <laughs> when the photographs of the live models, the women, they'd be like, that's right, you need to strip uh, down 100% take all your clothes off and the guy's like, all right, I guess I have to do the same. And they're like, no, 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 no. We don't need to see that. Wear a jock strap, pal. Come on. What, what are you trying to do here? Be decent. Put a jock strap on. This is great figure work by Austin Briggs right here. Ben Stahl doing some great figure work here. Form and bulk, which is, you know, making your figures look like they have mass and are solid. And that is done through tone and lighting. Practice project. Now we're getting into anatomy and they're talking about relative proportions. Once again, I've always said it, eight heads high. Most figures in real life are not eight heads high, but when drawing uh, figures, eight heads is good because it's easy to break up. 
The top four heads consist of the head, uh, the torso, and the waist, and the bottom four heads consist basically of the legs. Um, the crotch is right at the fourth uh, head division, and then the knees, usually it starts here, one to eight, but they're doing it backwards, whatever. Uh, bottom of the knees, that's how I do stuff. When I break up a, when I'm drawing a leg, uh, the bottom of the knees is at the two head mark. And once again, you can exaggerate those proportions for the different figures you're trying to build. Now they get into a little bit of anatomy. So you can see the skeleton. They get into some basic musculature which is good. I mean, you re to draw comics, you don't need to know. Well, to draw comics, when it comes to the skeletal system, you kind of just need to know the bony landmarks. And the bony landmarks are things that you can actually feel on yourself. So like your kneecap, your elbows, your collarbones, things like that. When it comes to anatomy, you don't need to know much more anatomy than this. Right there. The basic anatomy. They're breaking down the head and the planes of the head. This is the basic shapes of the head right here. Breaking down some of the torso anatomy. And, I, and I'll be honest, when I was a kid learning to draw, books like this didn't interest me because I would look through it and be like, they're not superheroes, who cares? But as I got into, as I got older and went to art school, books like this, I realized how important they were because Drawing superheroes is just about exaggeration, but you need to know these basics before you do the exaggeration. I just love looking at this stuff, how the lats tie in on the back. Does it show the back here? Yeah, it does. Showing the arm and how the muscle contracts. Cool stuff. Twisting of the two bones in the forearm. And they go into hand and some hand construction in the proportion of the hands and how the fingers move, how the wrist moves. This is really nice right here, showing the blocking of a hand for lighting purposes. You know, yeah, you look at your fingers and they're rounded, but everything can be squared off for uh, intensive uh, blocking for lighting and such. You know, getting into the leg and foot. Practice project. So here they basically want you to rough in the skeleton that you learned. So that's pretty cool practice. Another practice project, drawing the muscles here and in this day and age you can take a photograph of this and uh, or scan this page in and do it digitally instead of drawing right inside the book i love this humanizing the basic form now we're really looking at stuff that reminds me of steve rude steve rude's art when you see uh, the basic shape that he does underneath and then when he puts his anatomy on top, and you can see this shape, this egg type shape here, and how the contour of the body really sticks to it. And same with the basic shape for uh, the hips and stuff, and even the arms. I mean, this is, this is once you get the real basics down, if you can learn these shapes for the figure, then you can pretty much draw a figure in any type of perspective. Here's a great running pose using those shapes. Here's a fantastic example from a photograph here. And then the basic shapes are popped in. Center line back here like this. So it has a nice twist. Her spine comes down this way. And then comes over. This is, this is more straight on of the hips. So the center line is right in the center. This leg's going forward, but there's a twist up here. So the center line is curved for the spine of her back. Then it goes into lighting, which is very cool.
taking the basic shape of like an egg with down lighting, side lighting, uh, side front, side a little behind and then totally behind and how it actually works on a head. Then we go into the figure in motion. Balance on a figure. The figure walking and the figure running, how the hips sway with the movement of the legs. This is just so nice. Showing the steps uh, right here. So taking the photo reference of the model and then a quick, quick gesture, you know, get the pose down. And then, like I said, and this is basically, when people ask me my steps for drawing, uh, I don't do a ton of lighting in my work. So the steps for my drawing are basically these three. I'll start off after I do a thumbnail with a quick gesture to get the pose down. And then from the gesture, I'll lay in some, the basic shapes that make up the figure. And then from there, once the shapes are down, properly, I can start laying in the amount of anatomy I need. And then, you know, you can do the light and shadow. This is real stark, just to show it, you know, show the lighting. And then here, it has more subtlety to it for the final piece. Of course, they show it with a guy as well. Quick gesture, you got the shoulders going one way, the hips going the other way. You can see the twist of this dude's body where the upper body is almost twisted to where we're seeing it straight on. And the lower body is pointing off in this direction. So it's more of a three quarter where we see some of the side of uh, the hip here. And you can see it here with the twist. Practice project review. This is finished the drawing. So this is pretty cool, do shading. Here they use paper and just rolled the paper with tape to make the cylinders and stuff and put lighting on it. Now, with all the different types of action figures and stuff out there, you can take a flashlight or something and do your own lighting. There's even apps that you can use for uh, figure drawing and lighting these days. Uh, think with tracing paper. They have an example of tracing paper. These were uh, instructor overlay gesture drawing for practice project on page 2021. So have these tracing paper overlays, which is pretty cool. You could actually draw right on the back to get the shapes down. Contour drawing. Form. There's the overlay with the skeleton stuff they did and the anatomy. More form with the lighting. I love this back, how it, it's broken down. You see it curve around into the spine and then it pops and then curves around again. And it's almost at the point of if you take from the where the neck hits and then the edge and cut it in half and just drop a line down cut half, drop a line down. You got the light coming over from the right-hand side. Shade in, shade in. Nice gesture drawing overlays. So this was the tracing paper stuff I was, I was remembering. Basic shape stuff. You know, lighting the figure. Oh, and they do. Well, that's what I thought. There is tracing paper in here. These sheets will give you a chance to try out this useful paper type, popular type of paper. So yeah, so it even has tracing paper in the back of the book, a few sheets. Not too much, but it has some, so you can practice. Famous Artist School invites you to enjoy this valuable free art lesson. Deta and this is even perforated. Holy crap, I never knew that. Well, that's pretty cool. And then there you go. Love this. This is like old school comic book uh, penciling right here. 
This is what penciling looked like uh, for comics back in the day. Uh, I'd love to see their professionals each put uh, vellum or print this out in blue and ink either the female or the male figure just to see the differences that uh, we would all do. Uh, so there you have it. The famous artist course. Uh, there's a label I got it from, I guess. Um, and there was the famous artist uh, school course books, and you can find those on eBay. I don't have any of their original books, but I do have the famous artist school cartooning book or cartooning course as a PDF, which is uh, is really cool. I did print it out, so uh, if I can find my printouts to that, maybe I'll flip through that. That is fantastic. It has some great cartoonists from the 50s. Uh, going through showing different techniques on lettering, uh, penciling, inking, uh, all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was a look through of the famous artist school step-by-step -step method, how to draw the human figure. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from Penumbra before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. You'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2. Learning her.